What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 13 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to get our entity system started and actually create our player, so let's get to it. Now, someone commented in the last video that we are not handling entities in the best way possible, and they're completely correct. There are other systems out there that are much better at handling entities like the component-based entity system this person mentioned, and it's easier to work with and add stuff to as you progress in a game. However, the system that we are using in this game is, is going to have plenty of functionality for our needs, for the type of game that we are going to be making, and many other games out there do use this system. It's not a bad system at all, just there are more efficient and better ones out there. Just wanted to point that out because someone did mention that and they had a very good point. Alright, let's get on to this tutorial. Now if we take a look at the diagram that we created in the last tutorial, we'll see that the first class we have to create is the entity class because it holds all the base code for every entity. So go ahead and create that class in your game, right click on your main package and name this class entity. And I'm also going to put it in the dot entities package of my game. Now this entity class is going to be an abstract class, and again I'm assuming that you know what an abstract class is, and we're making it abstract because we don't want anyone creating a random entity. We want them to have to create a specific entity, like a player or an item. And again, you'll see how all of this comes together. So we're going to begin by putting everything that every entity needs inside of this class. Now we know that every single entity needs a position on a screen, so an x and a y coordinate, a tick method, and a render method. So that's what we're going to put in this entity class. Let's start by creating the x and y variables. So they're going to be protected variables. And in case you don't know what protected means, it's basically like a private variable except classes that extend this class also have access to them. So we're going to make them float, so a float variable x and a y variable. Now we're making them floats because this is how we achieve smooth movement in our game. It seems kind of strange because you can't display only half of a pixel on your computer screen. You can only display whole pixels, so why wouldn't we do this in integers? Well, we're doing this because the calculations in our game are going to not be perfect integers, and this is how we are going to achieve the smooth look of our game and you're going to see this put into action in just a bit. Next, we're going to go ahead and create the entity constructor. So create the constructor, and we are going to take in the x and the y position of our entity, so the starting position of our entity. And we're just going to set the variables in our class equal to the parameters that we have passed in. And we're taking in the starting position of the entity because if we try rendering it without initializing the x and y variables, we're going to get a bunch of errors. All right. So the constructor of the entity takes in the starting position and sets these two variables up here. Now all we have to do is add the tick and the render method of our entity. Now these two methods are going to be abstract methods. So public abstract void tick is where the entity is going to update all of its variables and move, for instance, and public abstract void render is where the entity is going to draw itself to the screen. And in order to draw itself to the screen, it needs a graphics object G passed into it. So go ahead and import that. This is our entity class finished for now. We're going to add much more to this in the future, but for now, it has a position and x and y coordinate on the screen, and it's able to tick and render. So let's move on to creating the second class that we need, the creature class, which is where all of our creatures, such as our player, is going to extend. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click on my .entities package and go up to new class, and I'm going to name this class creature. And instead of just putting it in the .entities package, I'm going to put it in the .entities.creatures package, just for better organization. Go ahead and create the creature class, and this creature class is going to be an abstract class as well, because we need to specify a specific type of creature. We don't want random creatures running all over the place. That just wouldn't work. Now if we go ahead and look at our boring diagram again, we're going to see that the creature class has to extend the entity class because every creature is an entity, and therefore they need a position on the screen, a tick, and a render method. The only thing that we are going to add to the creature class is health, the amount of health that that creature has. This is really simple to do. The first thing that we have to do is make sure our creature class extends the entity class because every creature is an entity, and therefore they need a position, a tick, and a render method. Don't forget to import your entity class if you didn't already do so. And now Eclipse is going to give us an error. And it's giving us an error because the entity class's constructor takes in an x and a y variable. So we have to pass along an x and a y variable to this class's constructor. You can hover over the error and Eclipse can add the constructor for you like so. This creates a creature class constructor taking in an x and a y variable just like the entity. And then it passes them along to the entity class. Now this super method refers to the, whatever class you extended. So if we extend the entity class, this super method is going to lead to the entity class's constructor with the two variables that we passed into it. That's how that works. And again, I'm assuming that you know that because this is all part of extending classes. Now every creature has a position on the screen and a tick and a render method. And you can't see the tick and render methods because they're abstract and this creature class is abstract as well, just to put that out there. 
Now the only thing we have to do now is add the health to the creature class. This is as simple as adding a regular variable. So a protected variable, it'll be an integer, and I'll just name it health. Now in the constructor here, we're just going to initialize health equal to, say, 10 for now. But of course, we're going to add methods to change this, and this is not the end of the creature class. This is just the most basic creature class that we can have. It extends the entity class, so it has all the entity properties. And then we just set a health variable that we'll be using in the far future. Now let's go ahead and create the big class of this tutorial, the player class. So right click on your .entities.creatures package because the player is a creature, and we're going to name this class player. Go ahead and click finish. Now of course the player is a creature as I just mentioned, therefore the player class has to extend the creature. And of course our diagram here also shows that the player extends the creature. Now the only things we have to add to the player class now are a texture, so an image of the player, and be able to get input so that the player can move. Let's go ahead and do this now. Let's go ahead and first fix all of the errors that Eclipse is giving us. Now we first have to add a constructor for the player, and I'm going to have Eclipse automatically do this for me, so I'm going to add constructor. And this player constructor is now going to take in an x and a y variable, so the starting position of the player, and just pass those two variables onto the creature class's constructor as I just explained. So the player is still giving us an error, and that's because the player class is no longer an abstract class. Therefore, it needs to implement or create a tick and a render method. And again, you can have Eclipse do that for you, add unimplemented methods. Now we have a tick and a render method in our player. So the player can now update its variables in here and draw itself to the screen in here. Now we have to go ahead and add the texture of our player. Now when I say texture, I really just mean let's learn how to draw the player onto the screen. So in the render method of the player, we're going to use the graphics object to draw the player. So dg.drawImage to draw an image to the screen. Now there are multiple ways of doing this. We're going to do it as kind of a temporary method right now. This is not the ideal way to do this, but it'll work fine for right now. We're going to change the way that we do this in the future tutorials when we begin talking about animation animations. So yes, this is not the ideal way to do it, but it's going to work perfectly for us right now. So the first parameter is the image, so we're just going to access the assets class and draw the player image, so assets.player. And then for the x and y position of where to draw the image, we're just going to use the x variable and the y variable, or the position of the player that we get from the entity class, as those parameters. And then finally we have null as the last parameter as always. Now remember, we have access to these x and y variables because we extend the creature class, which extends the entity class, and the entity class has x and y variables, two floats. Now Eclipse is still giving us an error, and that's because the draw image method takes in integers and not floats, and right now the x and y variables are floats. So we're going to have to convert the x and y variables into integers. This is really simple to do. In case you haven't heard of it, this is called casting. What we do is before the variable, we put parentheses, and then we put int. This is going to say, all right, take this x variable and convert it to an integer. And we're going to do the same thing for y. So in parentheses, before y, we're going to do int, and that'll convert it to an integer. Now we don't get any errors. So whenever the render method of the player is called, it's going to draw the image of a player onto the screen at whatever the x and y variables equal. And remember, we get the x and y variables from the entity class. So that should be it. We have the entity class, we have the creature class, and we have the player class. Now the only thing that we're missing from the player class right now is input. We're not able to get any user input to move the player around. We're going to do that in the next tutorial because that's a completely different subject. So for right now, let's make some test code and see if we get the player displayed onto the screen. Let's switch over to our game state class and begin writing some test code. We did a lot of coding in this tutorial, but in order to use the code that we just created, it's probably easier than you may think. All we have to do is create a player object. So above my constructor, I'm going to create a private player object and name it player, and make sure to import your player class. Then in the constructor, just do player equals a new player. And the player constructor takes in an x and a y position, or the starting position of our player. I'm just going to start at 100, 100, so x100, 100, y100 100 to start. Now all we have to do is in the tick method, we're going to do player.tick, and that'll call the tick method of the player. Now the tick method of the player right now doesn't have anything in it, but in the future we're going to add a lot into that, so we'll put it in our game state. Then, in the render method, we have to do player.render, and we're going to render the player, and we'll just pass in the graphics g object to it. So, this game state is going to run and call the tick and met render methods over and over and over again. Therefore, the player should tick and render and draw itself to the screen. Go ahead and run your game and look at that. 
my wonderful player images displayed under the screen at the X and Y coordinates that I specified, and it's using our new entity system that we just built. We did a lot of code in this tutorial, but we created a very strong entity system and we got it working. Now all we have to do is get some user input and make this player move around the screen. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next episode.